So you have the fortunate uh, opportunity to be the first training for our conference on the Ezra system for collecting statistics or checkout. I have, it's a communication gap. What are we talking about? We're talking about checkout day where we collect statistics and now it's a new platform, Ezra. And so you know that actually, so I really appreciate you being here because I totally understand what Vic was saying about the administrative side of ministry. It's not the most fun. Uh, and it can be quite confusing. And if you're one of those persons that looks at our forms and blanks out, you're going to be so excited today because you'll probably have the same experience. But, uh, <clears throat> but be that as it may, in our journal, we are required to do a checkout by January 18th every year. And that means we collect the statistics from the previous year. So this year we're collecting 2017 statistics that we then report to the general church. And uh, I have to tell you that when I first started doing this, I didn't like it as much as you all don't like it. And uh, I look at, once we start on this, I look at statistics until the journal is published. So I look at them for nine months maybe. Uh, and, but what changed my heart about them was that if any, that is the one section of our journal that people come back to all the time. So we put lots of stuff in the journal that a lot of people don't read. But historically, the statistics, people come in 10 years, the church put, uh, uses it for all kinds of uh, decisions. Like our church membership determines how many general conference delegates we have for the jurisdiction. So, so, every, so I understand a lot of our numbers are guesstimates, but they are actually used beyond the conference and to the general church. So that helped me kind of go, okay, well this isn't so bad. Uh, and uh, so that so we're kind of there. And so what I want to say is um, the main change this year is the platform or the site where we record. Uh, the num not, not much has changed in the content, and we'll look at that, but it's really very important. So I'm gonna, has anyone here never entered statistics or done checkout? Okay, one person. Okay, so if you get lost at any point afterwards, you talk to Jan or me or something like that, I wanted to go with the assumption that most of us are sort of familiar with the subject. We just don't know how to do it in our new platform going forward. Okay, and so one of the re we looked at switching the ability to use Ezra, and again, but I don't know why it's called Ezra, but anyway, I'm sure there's a good reason. We always have a reason going to this church for our names. Um, but this has been available for years, and actually Jody Smith, our uh, treasurer, looked at this five years ago with GCFA, and we decided it wasn't right for us yet. Now we think it is. And we're only one of nine of the 56 United Methodist conferences who don't use it. So now there'll be eight after we get on board for 2017. So, so the train has left the station, the ship has sailed, and we thought we'd get on board. And then finally, I hope you find this. This is what I know uh, Jan and Greg and all the people who check the, the forms that the churches turn in. Uh, there's some built-in warnings and explanations and um, signals so that perhaps before it even gets to checkout day on the 18th or whatever days y'all are doing that, uh, you'll correct them yourself. So we have less going back to you. That's our hope. And uh, so, so I am particularly excited about that. So I just want to say that uh, here's how we're kind of going to go through this. I'm going to do a PowerPoint because uh, if I, and then I'll go live through my, uh, my site. Your individual church sites are not live yet. You'll be able to look at them, but you can't enter information. Your tables are locked. Uh, so I want to go through a PowerPoint, then we'll kind of do a live look at it. I'll kind of go over again some of the content changes. And then Jan will be available to wrap up with any other. And there, if you have questions along the way, ask them. You don't have to say them, but you have something too. Um, so it sounds like we'll be here all day. We really won't. Uh, if I start talking too quickly, raise your hand or something, because that is one of my faults. I just start going and hopefully catch up. Ask Keith. And so I just want to say I really appreciate my husband Keith had coming because he's the fat person in our family, and I didn't have to worry about it. And then Stephanie, while she's Jody's new administrative assistant, she and I are going to be tag teaming going forward on the checkout day information statistics, so she'll be able to answer questions too if you call our office. If you bypass Jan, always call Jan, but if you bypass Jan, uh, then you can come, uh, both of us can answer your questions. Also, I want to thank Jan and Greg. 
When uh, the general conference person that runs this Ezra Statistics Program, Warren Area, came in September to our office, and Jan and Greg came up and helped train on it there. Um, so, that being said, we're gonna get started. Again, I remind you, this is the first time I've tried to teach it, and then this is the first year that we have been in the Ezra system. So it's entirely possible that you'll have some questions that I can't answer, and we'll all just have to get back to you on that. So I appreciate your grace with all that. So, um, so here you go. There, and if you'll pull out, you're given three handouts. If the church user guide is the one you want to really focus on the most, uh, there's one called Pastor Compensation Worksheet and one called Special Report. Finding the title, that's really hard. It's kind of right there in the top uh, fifth of the uh, paper. But the, this church user guide is the one you want to keep uh, close to you through this morning. Uh, and it has this website on that. You see that in the middle there in blue, ezra.gcfa.org? That is where we're going to be entering our uh, checkout information going forward. We won't go. So this will be confusing. You have one site for apportionments, one site for compensation reports, and now you have a different site for checkout statistics. Isn't that great? We like to make it easy on you. And uh, all different passwords, unless you make them the same. So um, so anyway, so so we each church has two possible logins. It's your GCFA number plus P for pastor, then the GCFA number O for office. So you only have two. Um, we didn't think you needed more than two, otherwise it would be confusing who's entering what. You can share these. And then the initial password is in Texas. So that gets you into the site. Let me show you what the site looks like really fast. That's what you're gonna get when you go to the ezra.gcfa.org. And there you're gonna log in with your GCFA number, either P if you're the pastor, or O if you're office staff. And then initially in Texas. The good news for you is we will we'll email all of this to you in December again. And also Stephanie and Jan have your GCFA number here. With the, so if you can't remember that, you know, that memorize that six-digit number, they can tell you what that is. Today, you can log in, and, um, but you just can look at it and print out blank forms. You just can't enter information. Um, And that's what it'll look like when you go in. I use Caney because I know Caney closed. And so I've gone in and set myself up with Caney for the moment. If, Deanna, you're doing Caney's checkout information, I don't know if she is or Jan's doing it. We'll have to close the church, basically. Anytime a church closes, we have to fill out statistics for the next year and close their membership. So when you enter your GCFA number, P or O, and then in Texas, then it's going to send you to this page. And then that page is the, uh, and you can see that on the front page of your church user guide. You see that? You can't see the screen that's right there. Then that's where you get to select where you enter your name. And we want you to enter your first name, last name, email address. Go ahead and enter phone numbers because someone in your district may need to call you uh, at checkout time. Uh, we may need to call you when it hits the conference office level. And so go ahead and enter. Honestly, we'll let you out without the phone numbers, but we're saying enter the phone numbers. That way, we don't have to try and figure out how to get hold of you. Particularly if you're an office person that's filled it out. On our previous forms, I always went to the bottom to see who filled it out so that I would call that particular person because it's possible in some churches the pastor did not do it. And the pastor's the wrong person to talk to. So, uh, so you can see that on uh, page one of your church user guide. Okay. When you uh, get in finally to your stats home, there's going to be a, a print lake report form or begin entering my stats. And um, is that, I think if you look at pages three, three and five of your church user guide, yeah, it'll show you some of that. So, um, so if you either button, if you print, if you pick print blank report form, the big button. Or do you see on the right that there's a list and under the menu, there's FAQ, user's guide, blank report forms and reports. If you pick print blank report form or go to the side and do blank report form, this is what you're going to see. Only your church will be there. 
you, 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 then you can run your report. And it'll look, and so we're gonna hand out um, some tables now that are in Okaney, and Stephanie's gonna bring those around. And this is a complete set of tables. So I went in Okaney, and I ran their reports. And I really recommend that this year, since it's a different format, a different look. You'll have then a hard copy in front of you of what you reported last year. It's the same as uh, we did previous years. On the left column, there'll be whatever you reported in 2016 with the blanks for 2017. Are you with me so far? <laughs> okay, so uh, so we recommend before you start entering your statistics that you go ahead and print the blank report. And when you choose that, you'll get a little window that looks like that. You can see it on page three of your user guide, what that window looks like. I really think you're gonna, gonna to wanna to keep the church user guide with you. It's also online if you lose it or you need other people to have it. But on page three, it shows you an example of that page too, also, that page also. Okay. So what Stephanie handed out is what you would get for your church. Um, that one is came. Then I wanna tell you one other thing. Um, can you see at the very top of that, very, very top of the screen where it says home, enter stats, report, submit stats and account? Can you see that bar at all? If not, I think if you look on page, uh, look on page five of your church user guide. Do you see that menu bar there? They've circled, they've circled the red deal there. Okay. The submit stats, that's when you're all done, you're gonna do that, but you can click on it at any time and it's gonna give you where you are. So you see that at Caney, we haven't started. So as you do, like say you go back and forth, you work on it one day and then come back in the next day, uh, you can go on and submit stats, you can see where you are. If you have a pastor and an office staff working on it, you can log in and see where we are, You know, see how far we've gotten, how far you need to go, that kind of thing. So uh, we, We'll not go over the complete process of submitting because I don't know how to do it yet. So anyway, <laughs> but that's the page that you'll do it on when we get to that point. Um, okay. All right. So we want to. So now I want to look at the tables. So you've logged in. You've printed out your blank reports. Now you can pick the button that says. Remember this one back here. That says start entering my stats. You can click that. Once, but, and here's what you're gonna get. The default is table one. And if you look at, yeah, go to page six on your user guide, and that'll give you another view of that. And, that particular table is under enter stats and then the tables, and that's one that'll show up when you click it. If you look at these tables, do you see a blue box on the screen? Do you see on professing membership? I just don't know how much you can see. Um, so there's a blue box right up there. Those are general instructions for the category. Under each line, there are instructions. It's either going to be under the line or there's that little tiny question mark to the right where you can hover over it. And if there are no instructions, they'll say no directions for this line. So all the instructions are built into the table. Does that make sense? Sometimes we give you like instruction sheets and all that. You don't necessarily need that because every line has its own built-in instructions, either under the line or on the question mark. When we do a live demonstration, I'll show you that. I'll show you where those instructions are. On the right side, under the menu, you see those little colored boxes? Right here on the right, far right, bottom right. That, that's the key to all the little boxes that you're entering the information in. The green one is vital signs, which is, um, I don't deal with that. Did y'all deal with vital signs in the cabinet, some? Well, yeah, it's your uh, membership, which is within the profession. Okay. Okay, so that's what they'll draw from that. The orange is from the conference, and we'll go over that again in a minute. Do you remember how it closed out when all the apportionments are due, January 11th by noon, and then the conference uploads to your table two the money that you sent to the conference, your apportionments, your special offerings? When it's orange, that means 
you can't enter it, you've got to wait for us to enter it. So you hit those boxes that are orange colored on table two. That means, and we get calls every year, this is why I'm saying this, and they'll go, I can't enter a number on apportionments. And we're like, that's right. You can't because the conference enters that afternoon on January 11th. So by January 12th, all those numbers should be visible in your table two. Because we get the money, we count the money, and then we send it to, uh, to the programmer to load up to your forms. Um, the blue is from an additional table talking about. You see the box that has like the purple outline? It's the one white box in the middle with the purple outline. When you see the purple outline, that means that number goes toward your apportionments figure. That special report used to be the goldenrod sheet, now we call it special report. So the box outlined in purple is going to show up on the special report, and we'll talk about that in a minute too. Then we're also, this is the, if it's that beige, there's an auto total line. Look at uh, line one there, which is the membership. No local church can enter a number in that box. Line one of table one is what you reported at the end of 2016 as your membership, the former line nine. Here's the really fun, they renumbered all the lines. So if you were a person that paid attention to the line numbers, like line nine was your membership, this year it's line four. So just forget line numbers for now and just go with the entering information. So, um, there, um, so anyway, if you see that kind of beige line, that means it's an auto total line or you can't enter anything that the computer's going to do that. And then you see a yellow warning and a red error. And that's one of the, we're going to talk about that. And on your, uh, if you look at page seven of your church user guide, there's another shows you I'm going to show you next. Okay. Now this is one of the main reasons I'm particularly excited about switching to Ezra and uh, perhaps all the statisticians and district administrators who check the churches are excited, is that if you can, uh, every line, not every line, but many lines have like a, either you gotta get this one, there's gotta be something in this line or you can't uh, submit it. Or last year you reported 10 and this year you reported 100. And so percentage wise, that is wrong. You know, somehow you had 10 in Sunday school this year, last year, and now you have 100 in Sunday school this year. Yay, that's true. But uh, if not, <laughs> then there's an error. Uh, and so what will pop up are these. Errors are red and warnings are yellow. So an error means that uh, you can still save this. And that's what I'm going to say. Every time you work in one of these tables, save it before you leave it. Because it'll keep your information. We're, we're worried about the errors and warnings when you hit submit. Because if you have any errors in red when you go to hit submit, you won't be able to submit. Uh, literally, you can't submit your statistics to us if you still have a red error. Now, um, so that may mean that you didn't bother to go back and check and fix some things. Or there may be a real reason. Like, um, this is the example they gave us in training, which I think is a little weird. Line 7 is now worship. Maybe, for some reason, your church flooded out all year and you didn't meet, so you literally don't have a worship number this year for some reason. So at that point, you call Jan. She has a submit override. So if you happen to have a real error that you can't fix because it, it really is a situation at your local church this year, uh, we do have a way to submit it without fixing that. We are not going to do that lightly, by the way. We're going to uh, go back and see if we can't fix it if there's not some information. And again, when, we do, when I go through it on the live part, um, I'll show you about this too. So those are the red errors. And so here's the really great news. So I'm playing around with Kami. I have the ability to erase the numbers I put in, but it would not erase the errors and warnings. <laughs> so anyway, so when we looked live, I went back and fixed them. I got rid of the errors and warnings, but uh, that's, so that's an interesting little thing I noticed that, uh, and you know, I don't think you all, I have to look, I don't know if each church can just delete all their stats and start over or not. But, uh, but I, I've got that ability, I think Jan does too, but didn't get rid of this particular part. Okay, so on the warning, oh, do I need a pointer? Anyway, this is the warning section right there. All right, so the first one's, I'll just read it to you. You're reporting nothing in the line that had an amount reported for the prior year. 11, I have to know, it's probably baptisms. So here's the deal, maybe you didn't have any. 
So you see the little enter number, right? Little word and enter, the blue enter. You just click on that, and then the box in the middle under explanation lights up, and you can write in your explanation and save it. So that will save us time, because remember when you go to checkout and Greg or whoever's looking at all your material, they're going, well, uh, this number, last year you had like 10 small groups, this year have none. If that will have maybe popped up here, you've already explained it, you so I've explained it, and then we move on. So I'm hoping that saves us all time, you know, that uh, we are self-monitoring with this program, and you've already explained all the things that don't match up. Because things change from year to year, maybe, or here's another one we get a lot. There's been a pastor change, and you don't even know why that number was reported the previous year. No one does. Like, the pastor reported 1,000 people served by missions, and you can't even figure out what it was, right? And so maybe it should have been 10, but we didn't catch it, or 100, or something like that, but it slipped through all our checking. So this year you go, oh, no, we don't five people every week or something, you know? So it may a warning may come up on that line, and then you have a place to put an explanation it is not one of those required lines like worship attendance and membership and things like that. So uh, so you can just explain it. How does that sound to y'all? Does that sound like that might make life easier on everybody? Yeah. 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 I, I'm very helpful about that. Now, we did not put a, a, a warning on every line because their experience at GCFA is then you're spending your whole day filling out these forms. So there will be some. That, so we'll still need to check carefully because there may be some that still get that extra zero or something and we'll need to like go back to go, which, which is a real number. But um, So I do have to say that this is the most exciting part for me about this new system. <laughs> okay, so one other thing I want to show you, I want to go back one slide. And this is one of those that, uh, let's see if that's on your chair. It's not there. Do you know that famous EIN number we always ask for? Okay, and that's really how you pay your taxes, right? That's the employee identification number? 75 dash. Usually, amazingly, there's some others that don't start 75, but generally it's a 75 dash time. So, this tiny box up here, you won't be able to submit if that's blank. So, we, so just saying, dig it out. I'm giving you two months warning. Uh, if it's not, Katie clearly doesn't have it, right? So, uh, so we, we're amazingly GCFA flex that number. They want it. Uh, most of the East District churches have submitted it, but yeah, it won't work on the screen. I've got one. Thanks. <laughs> I do have it, but we already got it. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, just saying. That's just a heads up for you, lucky twenty people that came today. Um, and uh, and you'll find that out if you try to submit at the end, and it, give, and it should give you, um, might have given me a warning on that, I can't remember. But just, just want to keep that in mind. Okay. All right, so you've worked on table one, you saved it, you're not done, you may be done. So the drop down is, un enter stats tables, you do that little drop down under table. This is what um, the compensation looks like. So most, most of the churches just have a senior pastor. So do you see that on 41A? So you can look at that on the screen or uh, you, you can find it on this table standout if you want to, the several page handout, the table standout. And here's why I want to point this out. Um, turns out GCFA wants a little more information from us. We have churches that get equitable compensation, and that's when they need to, uh, help from the conference to meet the minimum amount. Uh, if you have a full-time pastor at minimum salary, and you need to uh, help reaching that minimum salary, it's called equitable compensation. Every year in your conference, we vote on what that will be. Uh, first to five years, six and then ten. You know, if you have more than one church, that kind of thing. Well, since uh, that check comes from our office, we don't apportion them. So that so you you make you this is an extreme example big but if minimum salary is forty seven thousand and well I'll make it extreme the church can pay forty and the conference is paying seven the church always reported just the forty thousand so GCFA didn't know about the other seven well they need the full salary in order to make the whole Juniata Methodist Church come out correctly you know what are people being paid so. 
this time, if you look at 41AA, -A, can you see that one on your, uh, probably see it better on uh, page, page uh, six, right, of that. 41AA, again, we specialize in tiny print here. Um, it says, amount received from equitable compensation or other conference grants toward lead pastor's base compensation. So here's the deal. If you're the church receiving equitable comp, on your compensation worksheet, don't include that $7,000 you are getting for equitable comp there. Include it here. And then GCFA will roll it up and count it on them. But we won't count it on your apportionments. So we had to correct ourselves this year for them. So we track it uh, for GCFA, the general church, but we don't apportion it. Does that make sense? And then we also have some churches that get grants, like either it's a new church start or uh, campus ministry. So that line, if you look at 41BD, that's under associates. An associate cannot get equitable comp, but an associate could get a grant uh, to do certain ministries as part of their salary. Now, if you're getting a grant for the ministry itself, it doesn't go here, but if it's part of the salary, it does. And so that's a big change for us. We used to ask for that information on our worksheet, but it just never got reported to the general church. This way it'll get reported. Does that make sense, kind of? I, I really hope that each line's instructions will help us, you know, walk through it and it'll be simple to understand. But, uh, and again, you can see on this, the purple line boxes, that means it's going to the apportionment figuring uh, special report. Okay. Also, I'm just going to say this and then I'm going to say it again. While you're looking at page six, you see line 50, where it says total church expenses? Here's a huge change, and we can't change this. <laughs> this is part of the Ezra. That total does not show up until I click a button at the conference office, and it says total. So you'll be filling out uh, table two, and even after, on January 12th, when all the remittances come in, it still won't have a total. So we're working, we can't change that part of the program. Uh, I'll be talking with Lauren at GCFA. How many times can we do the grand total? Can we do it like on the 12th after everybody's entered, after you see the remittances? The problem with that is that maybe you're not through filling out table two. Maybe you don't start till January 15th on table two. And if I do the total on the 12th, it's still not gonna let you add in whatever else you put there. It's not, a, the total is only done from the conference office. So we'll be communicating through Jan about all that. It's, that's new to us. We've always been able to see that like total as it got added in, which was formerly line 60, now it's line 50. Um, and so just don't sweat it. It's okay, there will be a total. Uh, I would prefer to be able to see it as we go, but literally we can't change that back. So I just have to find out how many that can I change the total every day starting January 18th, <laughs> you know, until I turn it in, I don't know. So is that all right? Just to, just to let you know that when you go to line 50 and there's no total, that's right, there isn't. Because I haven't hit the button or whatever the magic word is. Okay. Um, okay. So we've done table one, table two, table three. Table three is the income, remember? Table one is people. Table two is money spent. Table three is money received. And there's some changes in it, but not many, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So it's just your standard table three where you're entering your offerings, your income from other sources, memorials, whatever it is that you have, and we'll come back to that. So as in, this is another report that we asked UCFA to build, and that's the other hard-to-read handout I gave you called Special Report. And you, if you look at it, um, so this will be automatically filled out. This is what uh, the conference office uses. There are only like 10 lines on it. You see that little with 10, box, 10 lines? Okay. This is all of these. If you read your journal and the standing rules, we have a formula for figuring apportionments for each church. It's one third membership, two thirds certain financial categories. So remember, we've been talking all along that the boxes outlined in purple were the ones that uh, speak to the apportionment formulas. So they have automatically linked to this page. And then you can see, and those have not changed. To change the categories, uh, the, our conference CFNA would have to do that. And so we haven't changed any of the categories. Again, we just changed how the format, where you're looking for it. But we did change one thing. Again, GCFA wants us to do math. So all those numbers come in except line 10, the total, 
and you have to do the total yourself. And again, if you do bad math, I think a box pops up and says, that's wrong. Here's the right number. <laughs> so, but, uh, and so again, we'll live into this, see what happens next year, see if there's any reason to change that. Here's the reason I think it's kind of a nice idea. We do have churches that seemingly never look at their special report. They don't notice if their financials went up 10 grand, 100 grand, uh, 200 grand, big churches, a million. And so then they're surprised when they sit down with the DS at checkout or when Jody Smith from our office comes back to them and says, hey, did you know your apportionments are going up 25%? Because somehow someone at the local church failed to look at this report and study it. So I kind of believe that even if we get automatic adding on the compensation worksheet, we may not add that in on the special report because I think it's to the church's best interest to actually read this report and to do their own addition and see, like here's Penny, we know they're closed, and that their financial peaks of apportionments last year was $2,733. If somehow it said $6,733, it's important that that pastor and or staff person has looked at it and said, wait a minute, why did it go up so much? Maybe it's legit. Maybe your church is growing. You spend a lot more on staff or operating. Maybe you treated up with your pastor and gave a really great raise. You know, I mean, there, it's legit. It can go up, and that could be a really healthy sign. The fact that you spent more is not a bad sign. It just means that you need to look at that because we do have mistakes, and we do have churches call way past the time when we can change it. So that's the deal. Any money, like numbers 28 through 36F, you won't be able to fill out. Those will all come from the conference. So if you, any offerings you sent through the conference for any particular special designation will show up, we'll send it. Now, honestly, this is one thing we were able to change. A lot of church, a lot of conferences don't let you see that. They keep those columns hidden until the very end. We're not comfortable with that because we might have actually done bad math at the conference office. We might have actually not recorded an offering correctly. Uh, we might, you know, it happens early, but it does happen. And so we would prefer you to see that because then you can call and say, wait a minute, I know our church sent 25000 in for Harvey and it's only showing twenty three five. You know, so then you can call Carolyn Bryles, don't call me Carolyn Bryles at the conference office, and she can work through that and figure that out. So. So you'll be able to see them once we upload them, uh, and it's any money you send. So if you didn't send it through us, like look at line 37. And this has always been true. These lines, numbers have only changed, not the definitions. Total amount given directly to United Methodist Cause is not sent to the conference. Maybe your church should come for Harvey and send it straight to the Texas Conference, or to Rio Texas Conference, or First United Methodist Church, Rockport, or whatever. That's where you report it, because we didn't get it, so we won't record it. Yeah, so it just depends on where you send it and how it's sent. Does that make sense? So, so none of that's changed. That's just um, the way it is. Okay, so I want to, we really are going to get that. Um, after you do, uh, again, remember the submit button. And you can see there that it gives you the red warning about your EIN. Your saved EIN is invalid because it only has X's, for example. Um, so it'll give you that, and it gives you, you know, this doesn't show ready to submit because literally, I'm a little leery of filling out anybody's reports. I would have to unlock them, and then everybody be unlocked, so we'll all learn together on this one. And then one more thing that's available to you online, you see again on the this uh, sidebar under menu where it says reports. If you select that, these are available to you. So this church user guide, you can get uh, notes on church membership, which we'll get for you in a minute, actually, uh, printable line directions, individual reports, spreadsheets. So um, so you can even select your own church warning report. So maybe you want to just click on that and say, where are all my warnings? You know, I've forgotten. Are they table one, table two, table three? So you can get a list of them. So I think that just uh, don't be afraid to click on things. When I first started with computers, I was a little afraid if I click on this, will it like explode, right? Or will I do something I can't change? That's not possible. Even if you put in something you think is terrible and you can't fix it, you can call Jane and or me and we can do some overrides, I think, so, or help you through it. So we are also asking for grace this year because <laughs> it's new to us too. Uh, so what I want to do is 
kind of go live, is that okay? And uh, show you, and I have to go in, it's me, so you'll see things that you don't have, but, um, but I think it'll help. Okay, here we go, Keith. Oh, So you put in 
let's pretend Fannie did three different ministries. So the general church has four main goals. One is related to poverty, and the other is related to health, and then I don't remember the other two, like maybe New Church starts and something else. Remember they had those four overarching goals for a couple of quadrants. So now they want to collect how many of these outreach ministries that you put in 21 um, apply are health related and how many are for the poor. So you could, these don't add into anything else. So if you did three ministries and you think all of them had to do with uh, both health and the poor, you could put three in both of them. Okay, so, so you look at that individual ministry. So maybe it's feeding the hungry. And so that's for the poor, but you also had a blood mobile there or you had a nurse there or something, you know, to check the blood pressure. Uh, so, so what the church is collecting is how many ministries do you did for outreach, justice, and mercy, and then how many of them were for health or, or the poor? Maybe none of them were. You know, maybe you had a revival that you tried to get people to come. So those can be zeros too. They don't, but, so I just want to say that that you can have everything you did in both, you can have split them up, you can have none, but that's, they're trying to collect the targeted ministries our churches are doing for the poor and for and related to also uh, health. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's a big change on that part. Okay, so I'm gonna save it. And it's gonna give me a message. Your data was saved, but with errors, information in it was not accurate. Please check the errors and save any changes. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the top very top of the page. There you go. Not looking good for Shirley filling out Cain. So it says line seven to required field. That was the worship that had zero. So I go, go back and fix it right and that'll go away. Uh, the ethnicity line must equal 12. And I only have 10 in there. So I forgot to put two in uh, Native American or whatever. And then the total gender line is wrong. There are 12 people supposedly, but I only entered 10. So those are fixable, right? I mean, uh, so you go back, fix that, the red will go away. All right, so here's an example then of explanation I did. Um, I, I Last year, it was zero, but I said, oh, we added a Sunday school class. Um, so my problem is, I don't know what 5D is. Can someone tell me what 5D is? I don't remember those. Native American. It was the Native American? Okay, so last year, so you say, okay, so I'm going to say, well, um, huh, this person left the church. There you go. Update it. So when you, so when you, I still have to correct, I only have 10 people, right? So I go back down here and I'm going to correct that so the error go away. Uh, so I'm going to say, oh, actually, they're all white now. And it changes it. I'm not going to correct them all right now. Is that okay? I don't want to keep you all there. Again, that tells me about errors. So the thing is, the drop downs are going to tell you that you need to go back and check yourself. And so one of my errors went away because I corrected the racial makeup of the church. And then I, because it, 5D had an amount, but this year it doesn't, I just do an explanation. So does that make sense to you? Okay. So again, not all 23 lines on this page are going to give you a warning or an error. We didn't set it up that way, but there are some that did. Okay, so that's table one. So now I'm going to go to the compensation worksheet. And it says, if you leave this page, page and did not click save, the information entered will not be uh, saved. Okay, so you may have to double check to see if you saved it. Okay. Then you're to table the worksheet. That's stable. While we're here, can I show you one thing? You see in the blue box at the top, let's see if I get closer, where it says verified on the right, where there's a checkbox. So once it gets checked, it's going to list the name of the person that checked it. And then the next person that checks it. So Greg checks it first, his name's there. Jan checks it again, then her name's there. I check it, then my name's there. So it'll show the last person that checked it. Um, so I just want to give you that little information. Um, this And this is the compensation report reform that's not finished yet. So that's where you put in the base salary, the housing. And I know it's not fixed because 
it really, I did the addition, it is 42356, but the program isn't ready because it keeps saying, uh, nope, it should be 3200. So something's wrong with the program, they haven't finished it. But again, that's what I mean, you do the math, but the program still didn't say, hey, that was wrong. <laughs> Here's the real number. So you go back and check it. So does that make sense? And that, and the, again, it's not linked yet, so when I leave it, um, it's not going to show up in table two. Again, that's okay. All right, so now we're in table two. Okay, here's the one thing I want to show you the most. Have I lost you yet, or y'all with me? Lost you? Yeah, there you go. Um, all right. We always have asked you to enter the market value of your buildings and land, right? And we rarely go back and say, is that right? Because, you know, maybe you had a new appraisal, maybe you didn't, maybe you're in last year's, we're okay with that. But then we get to line 25, where it's market value of your money. This year they've changed it, say liquid assets. Because we always, you know, Jan, if you say I have $24,000 in 2016 and this year I have $24,000, Jan's going to call you or I'm going to call you and say, how is that possible? Did you really have the exact same amount of money in 2016 and 2017, just by a fluke of nature, it all came out the same? We think you copied the same number there and didn't really look at your books. That's what we really think. That's, you know, I have had a pastor in my history say, that is the right number, and that's why I had to go we'll put in the notes. He says it's the right number. Okay, so, so they're trying to make it clear. Enter the estimated market value of cash, stocks, bonds, trusts, securities, investments, including endowments, one to the church, including money raised or donated, held for future building programs or any other special purposes and all property and other investments not included elsewhere, include any liquid reserve funds in this line. So any money the church has somewhere in savings, in your checking account, whatever, goes there. We literally do not believe it will match $2,132 last year. You know, I'm sorry, and that sounds cynical, but we don't. Uh, so just keep us from calling you. Go get your checkbook from your treasurer and say, how much money do we have December 31st? You know, how much money is in savings? How much, you know, just find it, write it down. Otherwise, you have to do it anyway. So um, so just want to give you that little heads up. And so they tried to make it clear, and I'm going to talk about this line again. Memorize line 25, because when we get to table 3, I'm going to talk about it again. Um, and then again, we talked about, again, over and over, the money that the orange boxes we're going to put in, um, and then the purple, the line purple, are going to special report page. Again, the instructions in the blue, see how there are instructions under each line? That's why I talked about at the beginning of the uh, time, that the instructions are there, in here. So we're not having necessarily a separate piece of paper. The church user's guide tells you how to use Ezra. Uh, but the information here should be pretty clear, and the, Lauren really tried to make it totally clear. And here down to line 50. Remember line 50? It's orange. So that means you, no one can fill it in but the conference office. And again, we'll keep you apprised of how often we can do that. I'm really hoping we can do it every day. But if not, you'll never know the total, and we won't be able to compare it to table three. So keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. Um, I know I'm going to leave something out, but we're about done. Okay, uh, so now you can see that when I worked on it earlier, again, we have the error lines. I have explanation lines there that I'm going to have to fill in and explain. Um, that shouldn't take a long time. Usually, it may be that you'll go, hmm, I don't know either. All right, so here we go to table three, church income. Again, it's going to give me the note that if you leave this page, page and don't click save, the information here will not be saved. And now we're at church income. And I want to talk about a couple of the things in here. If you save and then you want to change something, you can, yeah, you, can, you can change anything until you submit it. And once it's submitted, you're locked out. But then you can still call Jan and think after you look, say you and want a person that works ahead instead of the night before. And so you uh, go, you can call Jan up and say, hey, we just figured out that we left this out or I just got some more information. Can you unlock it for me? And then you go back and fix it. So you can keep working into it until you do the submit process. And then at that point, um, after you submit, we can unlock it so you can fix it. Or we can fix it for you too. A lot of times we'll fix it for you. Okay. Um, line 52 is money received 
um, to put in your budget. They, I, I, ask, I would invite you to read every one of these lines to be really clear. But one of the things they try to make really clear, and let me get my notes. All of this money that you're reporting in 52 right here is money you use toward your budget, like to pay your bills, right? To pay for your programs, to pay your pastor. Um, so say you've got money back in line 25, remember line 25 in savings, and you know you needed 100,000 this year and you only got 95,000, so you took 5,000 out of savings. Um, that you're going to include that in, in, line, in section 52. I'm going to tell you what line that is if I can remember it. 52D. All right, so see that? Amounts received from interest and dividends and or transferred from liquid assets. So remember line 25 was liquid assets? So the 5000 you used to make your $100,000 budget that you took out of 25 to put here. So would you take 5000 out in line 25 then? Would you reduce it by that? Yes. So if you take money out of your liquid assets to meet your budget, report it on 52D, but reduce your liquid assets on 25 by that amount. Does that make sense? So it's like it's showing up on income and it came out of all your savings or dividends or something, reduce it by that amount. So they're really trying to be clear at GCFA that that's kind of how these two tables work. You know, That's why, um, in particular, if we get a church that did that, but then their number on line 25, the exact same as 2016, and we're pretty confident that they didn't deduct that amount that they used over here. So, yeah. Okay, if you have your totals for line 25, and you say it's uh, you know, 25 million, and you take out the Yes. If you're using your actual year end numbers, yes. Okay. But what the problem with it that she's trying to say is where in the past we've compared table three income to table uh, the reporting of the assets. And those numbers didn't match up. Table three didn't have a place for where that was right. assets. Right. And we're not going to expect dollar to dollar because we're not going to go do an accounting at your church. You know, so maybe you took five thousand in here, but you have to get ten thousand dollars that came in, which you should report down in another line. Um, but just a second, we'll talk about that. So, say you sold the church, something, not the whole church, the parsonage, or a side building you had, or maybe you had rental property you sold. All right, so you sell it. If you're using part of it to, again, you got another 5,000 shortage that you need to pay your bills, you put that amount in here, but the rest of it goes down in line 53C. So you sold it for 100,000, you use 5,000 to offset your budget needs this year, but the other 95 you put over here in funds from uh, sources and projects including sell buildings. So that 95 should show up in line what? 25 because that's more income. So that's why I mean, we're not gonna look at line 25 and have it match up to the money you spend on the budget. It's just that if you sell a building now, that money, if you're using part of it for expenses to make it for the end of the year, it shows up in 52 somewhere, and the rest of it shows up here in 53. So this is not much different in the past, it's just clearer. This is what we should have always been doing. They just detailed it out so you will. If you don't sell a church, no problem. <laughs> you know, if you're not selling anything, you don't even have to worry about those two lines. The main thing you have to worry about is if you're using, if you don't take in enough offerings or whatever, whatever, to, supplement, to pay, fund your year and you're dipping into savings or dividends or whatever, you need to show that up here on uh, the liquid assets line, line 52D. So those are the main things to point out. Uh, and again, if you get some memorials here for this year, where's the memorial line? On well, 53B, do you see how the hovering is giving me instructions over and over? Anyway, sorry. If you get 53B and you get memorials again, 
it tells you total market value of assets should be reflected in the lines 24 and 25. So if you had $6,000 from Memorial's this day, you report it here this year, but also include it then somehow in line 25 as part of your assets. So basically, table three is trying to be clear about driving us to report what we get accurately and then make sure we're reporting it uh, accurately on table two as money that we have. And, uh, it's not like an audit that it's supposed to be. Okay. So let me just show you the special report real fast. And again, if I entered any figures and they were wrong, it would give me warnings and errors. And then here's the special report. And the, all those numbers will come in, except you have to do the math on, um, I'll just put in some money. It says data will save with errors. And here it is. The calculated value is actually zero, but I've been in 30,000. So anyway, those are all the tables. Let me just see if I left out any other facts, and then I'll turn over to Jen. Uh, one on your worship attendance they've now um, made a line for online worship so here's the deal if you so say you have online worship and it describes what that means um, enter that if you can actually document your average online worship attendance. If in the past you've done that include and you used to include it in line 7, your actual membership attendance, put it there too because these two lines do not add. The church is now trying to see what the online worship presence is nationwide or worldwide. So if you have that and it fits any of that definition there, put a number in there. If you used to count it as part of your weekly worship attendance, continue to count it there too. Because 7A will not add to 7 in anybody's books. Does that make sense? So uh, if you're going to report it, report it both places. If you want it to count that way. And also, Stephanie was handing out, uh, there's notes on church people. One of the things we have trouble with is figuring out if the person is a constituent, if they're a baptized member, a professing member, an affiliate. So this is the general church's definition of that. If you're having trouble figuring out what your church members are. That's it. And then there's an FAQ that Stephanie's handing out uh, that you can look at, and um, that gives you more information there. Okay, Gina, do you want to do any follow up here? Or are there any other questions I'd like to ask? Oh, are you totally break it? I think that when you, you get in here and do it, it actually makes sense. And it's going to give you warnings or errors, and it's the same information we've been collecting for years. It's just probably lined out better than the explanation. 